Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday the 9th of December 2022. Now we've got a lot to cover in today's video so you might want to speed it up or just skip through it when you get a little bit bored. So we're going to start off today with news of a possible another signing. This is from footballleagueworld.co.uk. Yeah, I know it's not the um, platinum of sources, but let's see what they have to say. Exclusive. So it's not a report. It's uh, they're saying it themselves. Millwall set to be EFL size to midfielder signing. Millwall are set to seal a deal for non-league ace Josh Kia. Sources have told the Football League World exclusively. The 19-year-old midfielder is currently with Metropolitan Police of the Southern League Premier Division and has been in prison this season. Yeah, uh, Metropolitan Police is basically just like any other non-league team. It's just name only. It's not a team for the police to play for. I think it kind of started off out like that, but it's basically not anymore. Uh, you've probably got more like reformed gang gangsters trying to play for them. Uh, that kind of thing, um, than actual ex-police and stuff. I think they might just help coach it and run it kind of stuff behind the scenes. So it's just like an, another normal non-league team based in, in, I think it's in Surrey, in the court, somewhere like that. Uh, a number of EFL sides have been looking closely, but it's Millwall who invited him to the new den to train last month, and it is apparent that they liked what they saw from him, with them offering the chance to join the Skybet championship side it's a great opportunity for the young player and also another demonstration of mill monitoring the lower levels of english football carefully looking for any potential gems of course kia will have a lot to learn and develop over the coming years if he wants to be a first team regular for the lions but it is clear that gary routes men are confident he at least has the potential to be a star in the future in giving him this opportunity all being mill well mill should announce the deal with in the future, and then Kia can look forward to working more closely with his new teammates and kicking his career up a level. Yeah, so this is the second player we've been linked to signing. Um, that apparently is a done deal. Well, nothing has been announced officially by the club. I told you the other day about the, the lad from Shamrock Rovers, 19 year old Edu Maku. Apparently, that, that's a done deal. And now we see we have uh, Josh Kia here, another 19 year old. Uh, midfielder so what's going on here why it looks like we're trying to boost up our under 21s now why is that a possibility why are we doing this a number of reasons let me explain it may be that our under 18s aren't very good in terms of progression there might not be enough players or, or in certain positions maybe in the midfield to take that bump up and join the under 21s for next season the upcoming season that are trying to bring outsiders in to do that another reason could be they might be about to be loaning out obviously the under 21s this season very successful team scoring goals for fun a very attacking style but it's for the under 21s these players need to play competitive men's first team football um has at a level that they're suited to. We've had uh, Bisar Topolog go out on loan, Chinokoli go out on loan, Mark Grant go out on loan. Could we start to be seeing um, some of these players like Abdul Malik, Nana Boateng go out on loan? Maybe that's why these other players are being brought in so that there isn't a drop in quality because they're still trying to push on, trying to compete, trying to win the title, the league. Then that attracts other players to come to them if they can win the uh, competition that they're in. It looks good for them. But also, you need to progress the individual players. So they might be going out on season long loans. You never know. Because a similar thing happened earlier in the season. We signed a third goalkeeper. We signed Connell Truman. Why did we sign him? Well, literally the same day or the next day, the two young goalkeepers who were basically understudy to. George Long and Bob Bukowski, so they were third and fourth choice goalkeepers. They went out on season long loans. Or well, one went out on season long loan, one went out on short term uh, loan. That might be why we're signing these two young players. That as soon as 
the January transfer window opens, we're going to see a couple of the under 21s, maybe Abdul Malik, maybe none of those things. Um, maybe someone else go out on loan and play proper football, in quotes, proper football, and help them develop and get them closer to the, the award first team. So that might be a possibility. But we have apparently signed um, Josh Kia, 19 year old. Uh, midfielder for uh, again teams for the under 21s. So now talking of under 21s, or this is under 18s. It's this is the from the FA.com is the uh, FA Youth Cup fixtures page. Fourth round draws been made, which is kind of confusing because we haven't even played the third round draw yet. That's how this competition goes. Unlike the men's first team FA Cup um, situation. Let me just remind you that the FA Youth Cup third round is taking place next Saturday, 7pm. It's away to Arsenal, but it's being played at Bournemouth Manor Park Stadium. It's completely free. It's a free entry. You just have to find your way there to Bournemouth. And a uh, reminder, it will go to extra charge time and penalties if needed, uh, if we aren't being absolutely beaten or haven't won the game in 90 minutes. So a little reminder, it might be a late one if you go into that. Now let's go back and see. So not the easiest of draws in, in first up in the third round draw. Doesn't get any easier in the fourth round, I'm afraid. Away to Arsenal. And now in the fourth round, away to Newcastle United. Now I'm not sure. I think this might be being played at Gateshead. Or it will be played at St James's Park. I'm not too sure. I think Newcastle United are one of the teams who uh, got permission to play at a, a smaller stadium. So I'll have to bring you details on that um, in a future uh, episode because uh, this doesn't have to be played until the end of January. So we've got a while yet and we might not, we might not even be in the game. So why worry about where we're playing it? Because we've got to, we've got to somehow uh, pull out the result of... Uh, quite amazing result in beating Arsenal who are a very good team they have some of their under 18s away with the first team playing in the Dubai competition uh, while the World Cup is going on so that's how good they are so let's just uh, don't count your chickens before they've hatched so talking of young players as well one of the players I told you was out on loan uh, Ryan Sanford made so United he went on the loan there He's been named the Shepherd Neem Player of the Month. And this was voted for by the fans, and he got 75% of the vote. So that must be good to, to be so well liked by the fans. Um, and it seems they they do probably credit their rise out of the, the uh, relegation places uh, partly on Ryan Sand for coming in. And he got injured in the last match, had to go off for half time. They were in a weird in position. And ended up losing, so that is not good for them. Now, is he injured? He might be, um, and that's not good for Mason United, and it's not good for Ryan Sand, and it's probably not good for Millwall, but uh, maybe not um, in the long term, as long as he, he doesn't uh, do any long term damage and he gets back a bit. It's all, it's all a bit of a learning curve, isn't it? So. Good stuff there from Ryan Sanford playing at Mason United. Now let's move on to the Millwall first team now. The big boys. Let's get on with it. Here we go. Jake Cooper left frustrated at championship referees failing to punish penalty box foul play. So this is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. Uh, Jake Cooper is not expecting championship referees to start punishing the opposition's legal attempts to nullify him from set pieces. The giant mill defender is a focal point for any dead ball deliveries and tends to get so many first contacts in the penalty area. But officials also seem to turn a blind eye when Cooper is impeded. I'm not trying to let it get frustrating, the former Reading centre back told the South London Press. It's a positive thing that teams are giving me that respect to mark me like they do. We started working on a few ways to get around that. I had two brilliant chances again on Saturday, and Zion had one cleared off the line. I had one saved by the keeper in the first half that bounced down, and I had another one that I added wide in the second half. 
It's about sticking with it. We've scored so many goals in the first half of the season. From set pieces, that more will definitely follow. People are going to take note of how we are effective, just like we do the opposition. It's about keeping it fresh and coming up with ideas to stay as effective as we can. Cooper, 27, has scored 21 goals in 274 matches for Millwall, two of them coming this season. Asked why there is more leeway for physicality in the box, he replied, You'd have to ask the referees. We got told they were going to be less lenient with things, uh, that they were going to be pull people to the side and speak to them when they could see grappling going on. But all I hear is both players are at it. What am I supposed to do? Just let them hold me and keep my arms by my side? I'm not a Russian doll. I have to put up some form of fight. In terms of getting penalties, that is not top of my agenda. I'm just trying to be as effective as I can and win the ball in the box. I speak to referees about it in every game, but am I expecting them to get a decision any time soon? Certainly not. Cooper is intense on writing... On Mill writing the wrongs of their last match, the Lions spurred good chances to score the stay in the night, were punished in the second period as Mad Diallo and Alex Pilchard uh, scored, scored before the half hour mark. Ellis Sims added a third from a simple long kick by keeper Anthony Patterson. They capitalised on our mistakes and we didn't capitalise on their ones, said Cooper. We couldn't do enough to break through in the first half and gave them the opportunity in the second half. We were much better side in the first half, and I can only remember Longy having one save to make. Pretty much everything went in for them in the second half. It felt like we gave them the goals in a way we shouldn't have done. Uh, that's been a thing this season, but we looked like we had maybe put a stop to it. There are always going to be goals we concede as, as a team and things that lead to goals. We've got to do what we can to learn from that and make sure we don't make the same errors next time. Uh, we need to put that into practice and be solid again, starting with a Wigan game this weekend. Uh, we've we've conceded five goals in our last two games, and you aren't going to get many results like that. We were lucky that we had Zion's performance in Preston, scoring his hat trick. We certainly conceded too many goals in recent matches. So there you go. Um, just interesting that Cooper's looking at it like we conceded two. Like he's, he's not happy about that. We won 4-2 at Preston, but he's still looking for those two goals. Like, yeah, we conceded two. Uh, that's not good. Interesting stuff there uh, from Jay Cooper's interview with the South London Press, londonnewsonline.co.uk. Now, injury report ahead of the big game. Um, unlike the uh, South London Press one, which was on Monday, we've got the Southern News one, which is on Friday, the day before the game. A trio ruled out, but Mill will forward to return for Wigan Clash. Tyler Berry is likely to return to the Lions match day squad for their home match against the Latics tomorrow night. Three Millwall players have been ruled out of Saturday's match against Wigan Athletic through injury, although Tyler Berry is ready to return after recovering from illness. The 21-year-old forward missed both of the Lions friendly matches during the World Cup break, as well as their 3-0 loss against Sunderland and the Stadium of Lyon. However, he will be ready to return to the match day squad against the Latics this weekend. The same cannot be said of Callum Stiles, Benic Fobi and Ryan Leonard, all of whom remain sidelined as they continue to recover from their injuries. I think Stiles, he probably looks like he's going to be unavailable. He picked up a bit of a calf strain, Ralph said. Benic, Lenny, they're still not quite there yet. But other than that, we've got one or two knocks that we'll probably just check on tomorrow. Uh, but other than that, I think we've had a reasonably healthy rest of the squad. Tyler's trained all week, but I don't think he's going to be 100%. When you've had that time off, he certainly built a little bit of fitness and feels a bit better in himself as the week has gone on. He'll certainly be available, so that means he's going to be on the bench. Uh, that's what that means. Uh, Styles' injury is probably uh, obviously the most recent of the lot, having injured his calf after coming on as a substitute against the Black Cats last weekend. Rowett said it was a bit too early to confirm the proper time frame for his return, but it's hopeful that the Hungarian international will be back in time for the end of the month. He's pulled his calf, so we're hoping it's probably going to be a couple of weeks, maybe a little bit more, depending on how he responds. It's a little bit of a blow, just in terms of the fact that stars he was getting to the point. It could really, really impact my team. Uh, when the play was then that unavailable, it just scuffles those plans a little bit. So there you go there. Gary Rowett on his injured players, missing uh, tomorrow's game. A new one, Callum Styles, and the one coming back, uh, Tyler Berry. 
seems like he's going to be on the bench because he does, doesn't think he's going to be fit enough to start. So there you go. Now, Wigan have a new manager. And we've got some uh, talking to do about that. Samuel so Boss highlights the challenges that await Polo Torre at Wigan Athletic. Gary Rat has already discussed how difficult it will be to prepare for Tom Norris' clash against the Latics. This is also from southerntnews.co.uk. Gary Rao expects Colo Torre to face a number of difficult tasks in his first job in senior management. The former Arsenal, Manchester City and Liverpool defender took over at Wigan of Leg at the end of November, meaning that the first league game in his managerial career will come against Millwall at the Den. That's happened quite a lot recently, hasn't it? Not like Mick playing us at the Den, but we've got a lot of new managers to face. It's kind of weird. Torre has experienced as a coach for the Ivory Coast national team, Scottish Premiership Club, Celtic and Premier League outfit Leicester City. However, while Rao has no doubt that he can be a major success in his new role, he does believe that the 41-year-old will face a number of new challenges that he may not have experienced in his previous roles. I spoke to Callum Davidson uh, about six months after he left here. I went to St. Johnson, Rao explained. He said, blimey, I never realised how many things you have to do that probably get away from the staff. I think that's the biggest difference. It's a spectrum of things that you, you do within your job. Of course, the obvious bit is that there's added pressure because as a manager, every defeat you feel a little bit harder, every win you feel probably the same as everyone else, but, but can't enjoy it uh, as much because you have to think about the next game. I've done both roles. I've done the assistant manager role and coach. I've done the manager role. Certainly, I know that as an assistant. It's a lot easier in terms of the nature of your job. It's very much coaching, being positive with the players. As a manager, it's a flip side where you have to make some of those tough decisions. I think a lot of people want to do it at some point. Uh, a lot of people want to see that as a next test. Obviously, he's had an opportunity at Wigan in the Championship at a very good level. And it's a very good starting place. But there's a lot of managers, including myself, that had to start a lot lower down and work their way up. He's got that opportunity, so I'm sure he'll embrace that. It's hard to prepare for, I think, but he's played at a very, very good level. with a very good manager, so I'm sure. Don't know that next step was a natural one for him, I'm sure. It's a little bitterness there from Gary Rowe saying, uh, oh, I had to work my way up. These players, Premier League players, uh, with the names, the Frank Lampards, the Wayne Rooney's, the Colo Torres. Uh, to be fair to Colo Torres, I think he's done more than the ones I just named. He's been around um, Ivory Coast, Leicester, um, Celtic, so he's, he's he has kind of worked his way up. He hasn't just been parachuted into a role like Frank Lampard did was, Steven Gerrard was, or uh, Wayne Rooney was. So he has kind of worked his way up for that, for that, and uh, unlike those, so maybe he has got some chops. So let's see what he has to say about that. So what has Carlo Torre had to say? Some new Wigan Athletic boss. Reacts ahead of the first test against Bill at the Den. Paolo Torre's first match of his managerial career will be against the Lions this weekend. This is also from Southern News. Colo Torre couldn't hide his pained expression after being reminded that his first game in charge of Wigan would come at the Den against Millwall. The former Arsenal, Manchester City and Liverpool defender quickly laughed it off. But he was full of praise for the Lions ahead of their meeting in SC16 this weekend. Millwall are a very good team, uh, very aggressive, uh, really good on set pieces. This is a, a real challenge for us. Uh, we have to come up with a solution. That's the role of a manager, bring tactical solution. We make the defense, which we had, had of course, but we give the best solution possible for the players for the game. Uh, Millwall boss Gary Rat had explained that Saturday's match against the Latics would be difficult for his side to prepare for, given that this will be Toure's first match of his manager career. However, the 41-year-old gave an insight to how he wanted his team to play during his time at the DW Stadium. It's very easy for me to speak, but for me, I really want to focus on the team. I've been working with the players. I know their strengths. I know the areas we need to improve, of course. Uh, everything will be based around uh, making the players better, as well as bringing a really attractive football. So there you go, uh, the player from Côte d'Ivoire. Um, Carlo Torre, now manager, and I hope he gets off to a really bad start, because that means we will want.
But before we get into previewing the game, I just wanted to let you know about a couple of things from Millwall's Community Trust. Um, so they are doing free December holiday camps, obviously um, Christmas time. Um, schools are not in. You might need to send the kids somewhere to do something. Um, there are holiday camps, sports camps, I think. A meal Community Trust will be offering free activity and food holiday camps over the Christmas holidays for the local community. The EFL recently launched Together Supporting Communities, an initiative to support the communities and fans of the 72 league clubs during the cost of living crisis. As part of that initiative, Mill Community Trust will be offering December holiday camps free of charge to the community. Uh, Sean Daly, MCT Community CEO, said, We're extremely glad to be able to provide free holiday camps over the Christmas period. Now more than ever, holiday camps such as these are vital for the local community. The cost of living crisis has been hard on all of us, and we want to do what we can to ease the burden of the crisis. Uh, we will be offering camps in Lewisham, and the Suffolk holiday camps will be in conjunction with Fisher FC. It's great to see Fisher FC continuing uh, to support the local community, as well as giving children the opportunity to learn skills from our coaches. And nutritious meals will be cooked for every participant who attends the camps over the fortnight. Uh, we look forward to welcoming everyone. The Trust will be hosting activity and food camps free of charge at the following venues, um, 19th to the 31st of December. Uh, so if any of these ring a bell for you, you places must be pre-booked due to limited availability. They are for children from 5 to 13. 5 to 13. And they are being held at the Bradfield Club. And that, that uh, thing there next to it is a... Um, it's a link to a form that you need to fill in if you want to book your place at the club. So the Bradfield Club, if you know where that is, it's Commercial Way. Bethwind Adventure Playground, I don't know where that is. Uh, St Paul Sports Ground, that's where Fisher play. Uh, Lucian Lion Centre, that's next to Mule Football Club, that's uh, next to the Lion Store uh, on Bolina Road. So there you go. You need to click on this form. And fill it in. I think it's an email form. You just fill it in and then you send, press send, and it goes through. I think. I don't think you have to print it out. I'm pretty sure about that. Now, moving on now to the second piece from Mill Community Trust before we move on to the big uh, prediction and preview of the game tomorrow. Mill Community Trust Santa Dash 2022. Uh, Mill Football Club's annual Santa Dash is back on the same day that Lions welcome Wigan Athletic to the Denon Skybet Championship. Uh, in partnership with London City Runners. Participants will assemble at the den for a 10am start uh, and run four kilometres, two away from the stadium and two back in Ada and Mill Community Trust. Oh, so this is taking place tomorrow. This is a bit late, isn't it? But they're only just telling us about it now. Um, okay, well, this is very late in the day. So, I pro you've probably missed the boat by now if you're watching this. Um, but uh, 10 a.m. on the day of the Wigan game. Uh, probably should have read it before I brought it to you, but uh, very late in the day to be wearing that up. But anyway, there you go. Um, now, this is 11v11.com. This is the historical head to head record between Millwall Football Club and Wigan Athletic. Now, Obviously, we haven't played them that many times uh, because uh, they used to be non-league and they found their way in the league. We played them actually in 1935, no, but that was away uh, in the uh, FA Cup and we won 4-1. But the next game was until the 80s. So, in terms of games at the Den, now, looking at this, you can see that we've only lost three games at Den, but hang on a minute. Two of these games won at the Den. They're listed as Millwall versus Wigan, but they were played at neutral venues. Most famously, the one at Old Wembley, or Oil Windscreen Shield, we lost 1 0. Fucking gutting, that, that was handball. How, how could you not see that that was handball? Anyway, let's move on. Um, 55,000 Millwall fans uh, in attendance. It was it was absolutely fantastic to be able to go to the old Wembley as a Millwall fan, watch Millwall play before they knocked it down. 
and uh, yeah, this is a good day out. Um, landmark moment for for a Millwall fan, especially for um, for Millwall fans my age, uh, millennial Millwall fans. This is probably where it all started. The we've been to the old Wembley, we've been to the new Wembley. We've seen playoff first playoff win in the semi-finals, first playoff final win. Uh, we've seen a lot of good stuff. We've seen FA Cup finals. Who ever thought we would have seen that? Um, so yeah, some good stuff we've seen. We never had it so good. Um, and now we're uh, tickling around the, uh, at the top of the championship, looking for uh, getting in the playoffs. So could it get even better? Could we be in the uh, second generation to see Mill in the top league? Who knows? Who knows? But uh, over the years, so we've lost. Normally three times to them at home, but well, the first one was at Wembley. Um, the game on in April 2013, that was an FA Cup semi-final. That was also at Wembley, when they were managed when they were in the Premier League and they were managed, I believe. But was it Martinez then, or was it was it Rossler? I'm not too sure. But that was the Danny Shitu game that that period, Danny Shitu Blackburn that that kind of uh, situation then. Um, so we've lost to them three times where it's been Millwall versus Wigan, but two of them were at the old Wembley, one was at Old Wembley, one is at New Wembley. Um, pissing down and raining was that day. Absolutely awful on the, the uh, one at New Wembley. Um, so we've only lost once to them at the Den it's in August 2004, 2-0. So weirdly, we have lost more times... At Wembley against Wigan, then we have a, a then, which is kind of worrying because you think that might be. We've only, if we've only lost once to them at then, um, we might be overdue. You know what I mean? Like it might be time for another one to come along. You never know. You never know. I mean, a lot of people thought Brazil would win the World Cup final. They got knocked on on, out, on their ass on, uh, by Croatia on penalties today. So you never know. You never, never know. It's a funny old game, as uh, someone once said. And last time out, we drew 2-2. Before that, it was a 2-1 win. Uh, there and there. And before that, it was a 0-0. So it's not easy against them. It's never easy. And... Uh, doesn't appear to be that easy tomorrow. They've got a new manager. They're in the relegation fight. It's kind of deja vu, to be honest. Um, so let's look at the match facts on the right-hand side. Um, Wigan have conceded at least two goals in their last five away matches. Millwall are undefeated in the last five home matches. Millwall are undefeated in the last five home matches against Wigan in all competitions. Wigan have failed to win in the last five away matches. Reading that has just got me even more scared of losing tomorrow because when you have streaks like this, they need to end sometime. I've said it before, if you're playing roulette, birds spinning the wheel and drops the ball in, and it comes on red. Okay. Does it again? Comes on red, okay. She does it again and again and again. Red, 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 red. So you were thinking there, you got chips in your pocket. You think, hang on, what the fuck's going on here? Suddenly so you thought, okay, I'm going to bet on red. And then it goes black because it's just been red seven times in a row. Why did you bet on red? Should have bet on black. But that's what I'm seeing here when I'm looking at these numbers. I'm looking at Millwall fucking chocolate, we're going to dog shit. Why would you not? Why would you not think Mill will win this game? Because these streaks need to end sometime, and it's kind of weird that we've got five streaks going at the same time. Now here's the thing: Wigan conceded at least two goals in the last five away matches. If they only concede one, that they've broken that streak. So we could win two-one. That streak's broken. You know what I mean? 
but that's kind of worrying. Now, here we go. The last six, uh, is this six home matches against the Den? Obviously, they have the uh, FA Cup semi final one there, which doesn't count because that's not the Den. Um, so if we take that out of the equation, it's been three wins and two draws out of the last five games at the Den. So again, they have they haven't won a game. They're overdue. Uh, we got eight goals to four, and then we got fourteen yellow cards to nine, one, three. So in 2015 and 2016, quite a few red cards in those two games. Uh, wonder what was going on then. Uh, as we scroll down and have a look, so here's the table as it stands, which is even more worrying. This is a similar situation to what we saw before we played Huddersfield. Huddersfield are in the relegation places, they were on a long streak of not wi uh, not winning. Or no, no, they were on a losing streak. Mill were on an undefeated streak. And we all know what happened. Mill went to Huddersfield, played like dog shit. Oh, it's here, look, this is here. We went to Huddersfield, we lost 1 0. So, what can you do? Well, not take them for granted because they're in a relegation place. Let's not do that. Um, because let's have a look and see. So obviously Mill were at home. Well, let's look at the form first. Again, the form's not the best. They've won one, drawn one, lost four of the last six. But they've scored five goals and they've only conceded nine. We've won two, drawn two, lost two, six and seven. Not that much difference in terms of goals scored, goals against, just the results that are different. So that you could account that to luck. Not necessarily uh, bad, with bad luck for us in terms of first half against Sunderland. And I don't know what luck with Wigan. Maybe they were unlucky. Maybe they should have more points than they got. I don't know. Um, so if we go back to the table as it stands, we look at the, the uh, home table. Obviously, Mill were the third best uh, home team in the league and uh, we're gonna bomb but they're not home they're away so don't don't look at that we've only conceded seven goals at home in ten games so that's good uh if we look at away from how good are we gonna away from home oh no oh no oh no oh no oh no that is sixth best team in the league away from home So obviously they're probably good at parking the bus, maybe playing on the counter. Oh no! Oh. So what we basically have tomorrow is the third best team at home versus the sixth best team away. This is not good, people. This is not good. This is looking to be a uh, big upset here. This is looking to be a big, big upset. Not good at all. We've got the streaks, and now we've got Wigan are the sixth best away team in the league in away games. If the table was just away games, then it'd be the sixth best. Oh, shyster. Um, so let's see how they got on away from home. If we look, if we do that, well, that didn't work. It, it did not work. It hasn't done it. Um, a velocity in the connection. I don't know. It's just gone crazy. Let's try and reset. It. Please hold. Right. So let's have a look and see if it'll load and do it properly this time. Ah, there we go. Now it's worked. Right. So what I've done is I've set up uh, the last was that five away games for Millwall, and the last or well, last five home games for Millwall. Last six. Away games for Wigan. So Wigan away. Last time out they lost 2-0 to Coventry. They drew at Swansea 2-2. Two -two. So Swansea obviously slow. Uh, doddering old team. They pass it around from the back. And I imagine Wigan. Maybe they pressed them high. Got the fourth them up in their own area. Got two goals there. They went to QPR. They scored. They didn't win. They lost 2-1. They went to Sunderland. Lost 2-1, which is better than what we did. So let's not laugh at Wigan. 
because we got smash free zero. Then they went to hole and lost 2-1 there. So notice the only game they haven't scored at away from home is against Coventry. They've scored in it uh, the five previous away games. So clean sheet tomorrow for Millwall. Oh, you think if we keep a clean sheet, we should win the game. Um, but it's not the realms of possibility that they could score two. They scored two at Swansea, they scored two at Rotherham. We might get lucky, we might keep them down to one, end up scoring two ourselves. But in terms of for Millwall, last time out, obviously, last home game, it was a long time ago now, over a month. Um... Hull, remember that? That was a Remembrance Day game. Um, Neil Neil. They had a player sent off and we couldn't capitalise. And it seems like a, a long, 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 long time ago now. But um, yeah, not the best of times. But we did keep a clean sheet. Um, we kept a clean sheet against Watford when we smashed them 3 0. Kept a clean sheet against Middlesbrough. We've only conceded. Uh, Two goals in the last five home games. That was one against Blackpool and one against West Bromwich Albion. We also had a player sent off. So interesting that the last two home games we've got a player sent off. Interesting. Uh, maybe we could get another player sent off against Wigan. Uh, that, that would help us. Um, let's have a look and scroll down. Mill strengths. Oof, that's quite a few strengths of Wigan. One very weak. Very weak weakness is defending against skillful players. Do Wigan have any of those? Well, they do have a certain young man from Ireland who might be a bit of a bit of a uh, protagonist or antagonist tomorrow. Uh, so match forecast: Mill will make a comeback if they go behind. Well, I certainly would hope so. And um, Mill will, will control the game in the opposition's half. That would be nice. So let's move on now to a prediction. Uh, this one from Sky. Now they've renamed it. It's not Pratt's Predictions, but he's still doing it. But they've added a name here. Simeon Gollum and David Pratt. So I think they might be uh, lining it up for it to be... Um, for the games to be picked by different people if needed. Maybe if Pratt needs a holiday or that. They can get someone else in because they've, they have, they've taken his name off it. I've just got these people here. I don't know who the fuck. The one on the left is the one who's called against South Sydney. And is that Jay Rod Rodriguez from Bur Burnley? Uh, I don't know about the guy on the right. He's clearly he's a Norwich player. Um, but there you go. So apparently he does a podcast. I don't watch it. 31 minutes long. It's on Spotify. Um, it's called Sky Sports Championship Prediction. So they're probably trying to make some money out of this by doing podcast something i don't know maybe get people to maybe it's like pr for the championship but i don't know but let's see where we are heading with this prediction this week from sky so what do they say about millwall versus wigan and of course we have to scroll all the way down because there are other games that are more important and Millwall versus Wigan, there's that twat from last week, doing the hammer sign, even though he plays for Sunderland, I'm sure the Sunderland fans love that. Um, oh, that's a Sunderland game, that's not our game. Uh, here we go, right at the bottom. Uh, David Pratton predicts Millwall 2, Wigan 1. So 2-1, two so similar to, to, uh, similar to Wigan's recent results uh, away from home. Three of their games have ended in 2-1 defeats. Makes sense that he will predict this tomorrow be a 2-1. So what do uh, whoscored.com say? Injury list. They've got a fair old injury list here. Uh, have they? Yes, they have. Um, they have a player who may feature. I don't know if you've heard of him before. He's called James McLean. Have you heard of him? Uh, he is an Irish footballer who refuses to wear the poppy and has made pro IRA statements uh, in the past. So it's 
seems that he might be getting a few boos tomorrow if he's involved. And we've seen in the past that these kind of players like Lee Hughes and others, um, they kind of feed off of that. And that might be a situation where we could get, uh, get a bit of a sticky wicket. With this geezer turning up and being like that. He is apparently their best player this season. If you look on the right hand side, he is the highest rated player of 6.92. So it would not be a surprise if he had an absolute worldly. He's had four assists. Um, and if he turns the Jets on to uh, kick Mill on the tee. So, prediction Mill ushered in the return of the championship last weekend, but Gary Rowe will have been wishing for another. Of long break after watching his side chip three goals in a defeat against Sunderland. The Lions have won winning five and have dropped out of that places. Yeah, we were the only team uh, playing last week along with Sunderland and we fell out of the player places because our goal difference got that. Wigan opted for a left field appointment in search for Liam Richardson's replacement with Colo Torre swapping the Leicester coaching role. Uh, for the DW Stadium, the Lacks are currently sitting in the relegation zone, the second worst goal difference in the league. And pro and uh, who scored dot com predicts Mill one, Wigan zero. Mill one, Wigan zero. Tell you what, I predict. Like I said, I'm very worried. Um, obviously, said there were some worrying things happening. Uh, last week against Sunderland, I'm very worried now. We've got a new manager here for Wigan. We've got James McLean, the boo boy, the bad boy, the evil man coming uh, coming back. We've got um, stuttering problems up front. Who's playing up front? Who's What's happening? Um, questions about the goalkeeper now. Um, Will Hutch play? Will Caress will come back in? Uh, who knows? Who knows? Um, but I'm sad to say I can see a defeat here. I can see a defeat. Um, it's going to be freezing as fuck. And, you know, they, that's basically bread and butter for Northern, isn't it? It's fucking freezing all the time up. So... I can see this being a bad one for me or war. I can see this being um being me all one Wigan two. Me all one Wigan two. Uh I hope it isn't, but uh that's what I'm predicting. And on that note, thank you for watching and goodbye.